<sighs> Yay, Sunday. It is Sunday now, and it is Martin Luther King Jr. Day tomorrow, um, which basically means there's no school. Mm. Which means I couldn't work tomorrow if I wanted to. Yay. He nailed something to a church, right? That's the one? No, that's... That's a different Luther. It's a different Martin Luther. Yeah, it's a different you, Martin Luther. You understand my intentional confusion. Yes, I <laughs> understand your confusion between Lutherism and the civil rights uh, activist Martin Luther King Jr. They are, they are literally both called Martin Luther. It's even yes. spelt, spelt the same, I think. Hence why we add the King Jr. to the end of it. Yeah... Just nail like the piece of paper to the front of the church, being like, "I got nine hundred problems, and the church is one." That's a really <laughs> weird joke. Like this whole thing is a really weird joke. I didn't really even know where I was going with that. I just sort of threw it out there because I have nothing to say to any of that, really. Hmm. Hmm. Prompting. Hmm. Mm. So it's mm. junior though, like. Did his, did his dad do cool stuff? I don't actually know. Uh, I assume he was also a pastor because that was a thing that Martin Luther King Jr. did. I believe. Uh, well, he was a early figure in the civil rights movement. <clears throat> was a pastor and a missionary. Um, what did he do? Exactly. I'm trying to find. He's a local leader of the civil rights movement, um, and encouraged his son to become active hmm. by so. nailing a list of. Okay, we're just gonna not do that anymore. Like that's still a really stupid joke. I don't know why I'm pushing it. So yeah. Um, <laughs> so Lutheranism. Yeah. Religious schisms. They're always a, they're always fun. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's really digging deep and scraping in the fucking dirt in really hairy topics for really pointless jokes. Like this is where we are. This is a Sunday. Yeah. I, my my brain rot is is activating to the point where I'm just imagining nailing like your McDonald's order to the front of the church. <laughs> I don't. Everybody just gets in line and nail things to the front door of the church. I mean, <laughs> it got attention. Let's be real. Like, yeah, people noticed that fucking thing. It's like, oh, hey, who did this then? Like, really, what Martin Luther should have done was taken that whole idea, like, nail the thing onto the door, and he's like, oh, hey. This got, like, a whole lot of attention. I should put, like, a notice board up here and we'll have, like, the, origin, the original version of, like, Medieval Deliveroo or something. Or whatever it is that you guys have over there, I don't know. Delivery service. Uh, Grubhub. Yeah, probably. Something like that, yeah. Or, like, Uber Eats or something. Yeah. We actually have Uber Eats, but I don't think it's very popular. Yeah, I it don't also, imagine it would be. It also doesn't operate in my area for some reason. Maybe we need more Ubers. Maybe we don't. I don't think Uber is generally a popular option in this country. Like we still like taxi services, just like regular taxi services. That's yeah, fine. it's 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 not a big deal if your country has actual public transport. Yeah. Unlike the U.S. where you need to have a car because our public transport system sucks. I mean, being entirely real, I wouldn't want to take the bus ever again. 
after I fucking someone literally stole my bus fare from under me after I had already put it down to pay for my fare. That sucks. That's yeah, just a terrible thing to do. It it really does. Like it was literally just I was standing there, like I I put the money down and the driver is printing the ticket and then someone just comes and from under me and just takes the money. <laughs> it's like why? Why? Excuse me? Like, I, I I, guess you really needed that pound coin that you managed to take. It didn't take all of it, it just took a pound. But, you know, still, like, fucking, why? Like, to be perfectly honest, if he, he had literally just asked me, hey, can I have a pound? I probably would have given it to him. Because, <laughs> like, it's just, like, I don't care. If he's asking, then it's worth a whole lot more to him than it is to me. Uh. Some people. Yeah. Uh. Yeah, taxis are cool, still. We haven't gotten into the... capitalist nightmare that apparently is Uber and Lyft and the other ones that may or may not have sprung up, I don't know. Uh, the Lyft and you know, Uber and uh, everything else. and Are there other ones? Or own... have they just kind of locked down that whole phone app taxi industry contractor drivers rather than fucking... There's hires? probably some independent ones, but to be honest, I don't... I, I never want to use uber or whatever um or lyft or any of the, those like ride share things because i just i don't feel safe being in some stranger's car you know said by the guy who got into a wreck fairly well like a couple of years ago i think it was but you know yeah i got into a car accident a couple of years ago wow yeah. <laughs> it's been years we <laughs> Uh, but like, when, when was seriously? the last time you got in a taxi accident? Um, uh, mm. I don't, yeah, but, I don't go in but, taxis. But exactly. if I ride taxis every day, maybe, maybe that'll happen, and then maybe I can sue them for money. Maybe, maybe I nice. should go into a taxi more. I might be able to get my fare back by suing them when the accident inevitably happens. Yeah. I mean, hmm. Yeah. I mean, you, you have a car, so you, you have a car and you don't drink, so you never need to take a taxi ever. Yeah. The only times I uh, actually did get into an Uber was when um, when my parents and, you know, my brother and my family, we go over to Las Vegas and you just, you, you just need to get around to the, the Vegas Strip. And so you just hop into a, like an Uber real quick for just a few minutes as they take you on uh, either to another casino or to a restaurant or back to your room. Because mm. that way like, I don't talk all... about with popping, pop, popping, parking and shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just way more convenient to just mm. get out there and walk if you, have, especially if you have a like room in one of the various casino hotels around there. Casino tells. Yes. Come down here and gamble. It's like my parents for like New Year's. We're like, hey, uh, we're going down with your brother over to the casino. Gonna play a bit before New Year's. Um, do you want to come? And I said, no. <laughs> I just spent a bunch of money on Christmas gifts. I, I would like to save my money instead of sitting in a smoky casino for three hours well you know various covid variants are popping up mm -hmm. you know i have literally just considered the fact that i haven't looked at my bank account in like a while hmm. so if that vibrating sound came through the microphone that was my phone unlocking while i do the thing i'm looking at that but yeah so, I think you talked about the Vegas trip. 
last time we recorded, I think. Yeah. I, 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 that was, uh, Vegas trip was a long time ago. I was just talking in general, like, uh, about Ubers and stuff. Oh, yeah. yeah. I was so talking about said, that. But before New Year, so I was thinking, like, oh. Yeah, the, the casino gonna... trip, yeah. Um, that wasn't, that wasn't a Vegas trip or anything. That was just the nearby casino. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I have been very, I mentioned, I was mentioning this before we start recording. I assume you're recording at this point. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I <laughs> Hi, literally everybody. didn't say again, cause I really should have in this instance, like, Hey, you know, all that really stupid shit we said, right? Like about fucking Martin Luther and stupid fucking delivery and all that bollocks yeah that's on the recording that's that's there for posterity everyone needs to know about that super important mm, yeah <laughs> nail your mcdonald's order to the door of the church someone will see it there's no guarantee that they'll fucking bring it to you but you know everyone will know about it i'm not going to ask <laughs> hi patient that's Hi, patient. Hi. I'm still not going to ask. So, how are you? Do how are you two doing? Oh well. Um, I taught kindergarten for a week, um, and I didn't think I was going to because I, I had prepared beforehand that like, oh well, on like Thursday, Friday, I'm going to teach for this uh, this kindergarten teacher. And then I'm going to take the rest of next week, which is a four-day week because Martin Luther King Day, because they have a, like a surgery operation, which that got suddenly moved up because I got a call in the morning of like, uh, that teacher's kid has COVID. Um, right. So they have to be on lockdown. So you have to go in today, please. So I go in on Monday. Um, their surgery got changed. So I don't even know if I'm going to go in and teach for them next week. Probably not. Um, and they have, uh, they had a very rowdy class, uh, particularly because there was one child who, um, who just screams mm. at seemingly random words or just, ah, just, ah, like a baby. And will break down into tears and screams, either A, without any provocation, either B, because the work is too hard and they don't want to do the work, or C, uh, they are hungry and it is not yet time for lunch. <clears throat> yeah, that sounds like a six-year-old. Or just random. Not quite. Nobody else does this. But like this kid, like top of their lungs, screaming in the middle of the <laughs> lesson. And that was like, I think the most challenging. Plus, you had all whole bunch of other just kids who are getting up and won't stay in their seats, or who are. Um, fighting with each other and it's just it was just madness but i think by the end of the week i had them mostly under control it's just uh uh I, I i lost so many uh sanity points maybe you should look into studying some psychology so you could understand the aspects of development that would help you understand what's needed I mean, assuming of course that you haven't done all of that already patient the six-year-olds hmm. i've yeah. i've done some element of that and i was able to i was able to work with that screaming kid by um it, it was I, I had to that kid was very starved for affection mm -hmm. i feel or was very desperate to have it. Maybe not yeah. starved, but just really, really wanted it. And I was able to get them to relax and chill. But the issue is, you know, 
I don't have these kids the whole year. I don't know what their situation is. I don't know what the situation is with their parents. And um, as a substitute, you don't have a lot to work off of. Mm, Of course. So you just kind of have to make do with what you got sometimes. Mm. And that, you know, it's it's really hard when you have kids who just will not work, right? Yeah. And as a substitute, like, what are you supposed to do? <laughs> you tell the teacher, and it's like, okay, but that doesn't solve the problem right now. You do what you can and leave the rest in the hands of those who can do more. That's all you can do. Yeah, well... This kid uh, probably should be in uh, special ed, but um, in fact, they were because um, they, they they need more support than what they are currently getting. Um, however, they're apparently too of a too high of a level to go into special ed, so mm. it's a difficult thing. Mm. Uh from that uh, stressful, stressful stuff. It's been a while since we recorded. A little bit. Um, Because, again, I I got super called in because the... the, We opened up after, you know, Christmas and New Year's and a bunch of teachers just cannot come in. Uh. With uh, various uh, things, either they have COVID or their child has COVID. Um, Numerous kids are usually out of each class at a time. Um, Either on quarantine because they um, a sibling has COVID or they have COVID, and yeah, at this point, lockdowns in general are just kind of not. Practical. I mean, California is back on a mask mandate of everybody needs to have a mask um, inside. 100% required. Yeah. I mean, this is, we're, we're pretty much at the point where that's just not enough anymore. That there is no real way to stop the spread at all. Like, Omicron just fucking goes. Yeah. Like, if if you're in close proximity with someone who got it, you have it now. Congratulations. Mask or not, doesn't really matter. Um, it's, It's just that virulent so hmm. question is it's uh our school's going to go back to like a zoom style eventually because there's there's not enough substitute teachers to go around hmm. like like i say it it just seems like th- there's no real benefit to doing that anymore because it's just going to spread through everyone the people that are really really at risk just need to be completely isolating and hope but everyone else just is just gonna have to go through it and get vaccinated for the love of shit like really that's that's pretty much where we are at this point, it seems like. Yep. Yeah. But, uh, you know. <clears throat> Still gotta do, uh, my best to make the situation good. <laughs> mm. Gotta be very careful, because you know, in contact with so many um, other people. Are you having to deal with too many people who are 
basically refusing to entertain the concept of getting a vaccine or wearing a mask? No, I have to deal with kindergartners who have a hard time keeping a mask on for the duration of class. Well, better than people who know better, at least, I suppose. Yeah. Um... I, f I feel like masks are going to be a fashion trend in about 10 years. Like, Dude, I've assuming already that, seen. Like, well, yeah, but that's now. But, like, assuming COVID goes away and we don't have to wear masks anymore in about 10 years, there's just going to be a massive fashion trend of all these kids that grew up for, like, two years of their formative education where they had to wear masks all the time. And that's just going to feel normal, and that's going to be just a thing that happens. Some wannabe fashion designer is going to be like, hey, masks can be fucking cool. I wore a mask for a while. It was pretty okay. And this leads to more superheroes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the like mask the... industry is booming. Like, all... all... Yeah, that's the thing that's going to happen. It's going to be like, everyone's just getting on this fucking face mask, mouth and nose, you know, surgical mask style, and everyone's trying to get that to catch on. And then there's just this one, let's say girl, because you know, stereotypes have a grain of tooth, um, who has this brilliant idea of fucking domino mask. And everyone's like, ah, it's, it's a little wrong, but she's got the spirit. But then someone's like, no. I think she's really onto something. And then suddenly, boom, everyone wears domino masks all the time. It's like eyes wide shut for the world. That's <laughs> ew. But still. <laughs> more masks. More fashion designs for the masks. Frickin' you see the the girls on the runway each having like sideways like half masks and like all sorts of um fashion masks. Jesus Christ. It's going to be the time for persona fans to shine. <laughs> like holy shit. Yeah. I can't wait for Persona Six where you have to wear a medical mask for most of the game. Oh yeah. I I could see that. I can absolutely see that. You know they would totally go in on, like, designing those masks to be super stylish and symbolic for yeah. each of the characters you've, in your group. You've got, like, the, you know, the standard kind of rough and tough guy character that they always have, and he's got, like, one with fucking teeth drawn on it or something. Yeah. Like, like, fanged grin. Yeah. It's like a, like a shark mouth or something. Yeah. <laughs> this actually sounds pretty cool. <laughs> Yeah, no, no, I'm, I'm in on this. I'm in on this. This is oh god, pandemic it's already persona. Happening. <laughs> pandemic persona. Let's go. I'm fighting against the despair of the of the the eternal despair of a pandemic that seems to never end. And that sounds a little bit like Persona Three all over again. But in fairness, it's. It's a more true story than it's ever been. So yeah, <laughs> bring it back. It's... Oh, I know. I know that this pandemic will pass someday. Um, I'm just sure that it's going to take a few thousand more people with it first. What a pity. Oh Thanks. boy. Thanks. Thanks for that patience. I, I, I always think about the the comics from the 1900s of people who are just slamming anti vaxxers all the way back then the yeah, last like, pandemic fucking, yeah the fucking spanish flu it yeah, always I, happens it was exactly the same thing those people like railing against any fucking medical treatment for it, and just let it pass through it'll go away and refusing to wear masks like this it's exactly the same thing let me see if i can it's just um all these different uh during the 
during the 1918 pandemic, mask slackers were labeled as unpatriotic. <laughs> Gosh darn it. Hmm. Just these old comics where they're just like calling people who who just don't wear a mask as dangerous as a poison gas shell. I mean, yeah, and like just... everyone knew what that was like at that time. Like it was 1918. Most men had been through it. The ones that were still alive. Nowadays, we just have more people going around who would rather not wear masks or get vaccinated because, um, uh, What's the best way to put this? Oh, I know. Something like this. I found this, uh... That doesn't work. Oh, give me a minute. I found this article, that uh, old article from like 1918, which reads, Anti-Mask League Mass Meeting Ends in Battle Royale. (laughs) Okay, that's that's actually pretty funny. (laughs) Anti-Mask League sounds like it legit sounds like an anti-superhero like (laughs) resistance group. Down with Batman. Down with Green Arrow. Down with (laughs) Superman. Wait, he doesn't wear a mask. Okay, Superman's okay. We're really just honing in on this mask thing. I don't know why it just it. I mean, we made it part of the brand, so it's gotta. We've got to be consistent, okay? So, <laughs> Superman's fine. Everyone else, fuck him. I want it now. Oh uh, yeah, uh, uh, Veruca Salt. Is that what that one is? Yeah. 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 That's the result of someone who believes that the right thing to do is let anyone do whatever they want to do. And that ends with them going down the garbage chute. Yeah, that's, um... Objectivism slash libertarianism, I think, is the thing. Can we bring back the phrase mask slacker? I like that. Are you a mask slacker? Are you slacking wearing your mask? Doesn't really roll off the tongue especially well. I just find it funny. It's a very it's a very saliva y phrase. Mask slacker. Yum. <laughs> Everybody just friggin' the anti-mask league being like, ah, oh, it's the unhealthy mask ordinance, and it's the same stuff hmm. we hear. It makes it hard to breathe. Don't you understand? I'm breathing in my own carbon dioxide. I'm giving myself carbon dioxide poisoning. That's not how anything works. <laughs> <laughs> I do like that that one video of like it was a super old guy like this was like mid 2020 so like towards the beginning of this being really terrible but also really stupid with all the people saying I don't want to wear a mask Um, and it was an old dude and he was like all all you people that are like i can't deal with wearing a mask this sucks it makes it so hard to breathe i can't take it and he's like what you are saying is you are directly admitting that you have never had a woman sit on your face <laughs> like, <laughs> just a super old dude just like you think oh it's just gonna be like a regular thing and then it just busts that out out of nowhere <laughs> and it was fantastic Ugh. I apologize, patient. (laughs) 
Yeah. <laughs> so this whole thing is just really... <sighs> oh, boy. Is it affecting you as well in your personal life, Casey? Uh, I am fairly certain. Uh, I haven't checked because that would be incredibly stupid to do. But I heard my downstairs neighbor just about coughing up a lung uh, a few days ago. Uh, so I don't know what that might be. Can't imagine. Um, but, you know, I haven't left the flat for... Well, let's be, let's be real. I probably wouldn't have anyway, but still. Uh, not really planning on interacting with anyone in the immediate area, by which I mean about three streets from here for the next few weeks. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Fair enough. And I mean, it could be perfectly innocuous, the reason that they were coughing up a lung. I mean, just last night, I was... Uh, uh, hang on a second. I thought I... Okay, yeah, got it. Just last night, I just about suffocated myself watching this video. Uh, uh, the TRG... Okay, best of the Runaway Guys compilation? Yeah. Okay. You know, it's just a lot of funny stuff happening in a very, very long compilation, and I just... I was dying laughing. <laughs> I was laughing so hard that I was coughing to the point that I was nearly tasting blood, so... Oh. Could... <laughs> mm. Yeah, sometimes though, you really do just need a good laugh. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> it's a very good medicine. Yeah. I've... Even if it's possible that it can kill you, too. Mm. I have continued to watch too much of best friends clips far, far too late to the conversation, but still. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I think it's, I posted it's a... one of my favorite. One. Well, in fairness, it wasn't a best friends clip. It was fucking just Pat. But yeah. uh, him watching it's in the shithole channel. Um, Let me see. Probably a few videos up. But um, it's him playing uh, Deadly Premonition 2. And a character is talking shit about people that uh, have vinyl records. And it's pretty much just on display so that they can look cool and sophisticated. And she's like, oh, these fucking records. I was on board when this was all like the vinyl revival and everyone was all about it. But then all of a sudden you've got a record store next to the novelty shop and... All it is is just people trying to look cool and not actually give a damn about the music. And Pat's just sitting there nodding with his arms folded like, yeah, I am totally right about this. I agree with everything she's saying. This lady's cool. And then immediately, like a fucking... Fucking just like that, the character she's talking to just immediately goes, oh my god, you are the most insufferable person. I fucking hate you. Can you stop being so annoying and opinionated about the most bullshit things? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, no, don't turn this back on me. <laughs> it's so fucking good. So yeah, that... That was one of my favorites, but I've, I've watched quite a few of them uh, in, in just, like, animated ones especially. Like, there's this one animator that was doing them um, with a weird, like, you know, CG, but sort of like a sock puppet style of, like, model, where the heads were almost like the Canadians from South Park with the sort of just flopping open and stuff. Um, and that was, those were weirdly compelling to watch for some reason. I don't know why, but the, the, the style of it actually fits really well. So that was, those are cool to watch. I'd have to see whether I can find the channel. I, I probably can't find the channel because I wasn't paying that much attention to it, but I don't doubt if I go on YouTube right now 
Uh, wow, I guess not. Okay. Like, I've just been getting more and more of these in my feed for the past, like, fucking day or so. Of just that dude's videos. And I can't find one all of a sudden. It's very strange. Oh well. But yeah, that's that's been a good thing to watch. Like actually watch and not just have in the background. So that was pretty cool. Hmm. Mm. <clears throat> I speaking of watching things, um Yeah. I have watched um the new show Peacemaker. Um if you don't know what this is, I think it's on like HBO Max or something. But I presume uh, it is a show about someone who shoots people in the face a lot. So it is in the no, new Suicide um, Squad movie. There was a character called Peacemaker, who is. I just like, want to hyper... record really quick. I have yeah. never seen the title Peacemaker or Peacekeeper or anything like that without it being completely fucking ironic. Not a single time. Okay, so Peacemaker um, <clears throat> is a character who is played by John Cena. Okay. And his whole thing is he's a man who fights for peace at any cost, no matter how many people he has to kill to get it. There we go. Um, and so this show starts immediately after that Suicide Squad movie where he showed up. He's got this big, dumb silver helmet. He wears red, white, and blue. He has a pet eagle named Eagly. And it's a hard R rating for this show. It's so funny. Wait. Are you telling me this is just basically Captain Bastard from Cyanide and Happiness? I don't know that exact reference, but I'm... They, they have a... Super, well, they have a lot of parody superheroes, but there's one that's just literally... A guy, a, a very American guy who lives in a trailer and has a secret super American hidden base below his trailer that is filled with guns. He has a pet eagle uh, called Eagle. Uh, and he wears red, white, and blue. And he is very vociferously protective of the Second Amendment. Is his whole thing. That sounds similar um yeah. this show is created by james gunn um it is it is incredibly funny um and peacemaker as a character is he's just really stupid he, he's just kind of this supremely stupid asshole <laughs> Who's, who's ah. just he's trying to make peace and he's just is like well the only way I know how to make peace is to murder people so I murder people yeah uh, okay and... so I was slightly mistaken it is not Captain Bastard it is the Star Spangled Bastard yeah yeah like it's such a, a silly show where it goes from moments of him just being completely inappropriate and not realizing that he's being inappropriate to um, him alone and and crying how he's such an asshole and everybody hates him because he's such an asshole. <laughs> and he's just a joke. And him complaining that he can't use a gun unless it has the Dove of Peace on it. And they throw him a Sharpie. He's like, I can't, I can't draw a dove a piece. Every time I try to draw a dove a piece, it looks like a ghost. And he just tries to draw. It's just, oh, oh. <laughs> and it's so funny. Also, again, like, this, this has an R rating. It is um, very inappropriate. But, uh, this is something that I, I am I'm having a lot of fun with. The opening as well is just super silly. Go 
go watch Peacemaker. Mm. What's that on HBO? It's on HBO Max. Yeah, I um, watch it. that's not. If you know, you, if you if you go and uh, you know navigate over to the the places on the internet that uh, have what you're looking for, you might be able to but watch that's it. Immoral. Oh, no. Yeah, well, it's it's immoral that there's seven thousand different streaming services now. Yeah, and that that one just straight up doesn't exist in this country. So I just straight up can't watch it. Yeah. Yeah, oh, well, you sense. know. Yeah. Oh, speaking of streaming services, fucking so uh, uh, Critical Role show comes out uh, a couple weeks. Yeah, I I saw that they had a, a trailer coming out, and I did back that show. So yeah, uh, I'm looking forward to watching that. I need to watch actually. I need to catch up on Critical Role proper. Like, I'm so far behind. I just I just don't have the time to like sit there for like four hours. I don't think I got uh, further than episode twenty-three of the second campaign. I don't they think even started a third. Really grab me that much. They started a third campaign, but they like, did. I made it very, I made it very far in the second campaign. But um, my interest waned um, as they kind of flapped about, and uh, I stopped working at KFC, so I had less opportunity to just set it on the background. You know. Also true. Yeah. Uh, but, um, I think that, uh, should be able to at least catch up a little bit on the third campaign. Mm. That was loud. I apologize. I was just sort of leaning on my pop filter and I just went, I'm just going to, hmm, hum an agreement. And it's like, hmm, and I was like, "Eh." it's also a thing where I'm, I'm playing so much D and D typically. Mm. Like, yeah, uh, you, you don't, yeah. There, there is a, a bit of overdose on it, I guess. It, it's that, and also just like if I watch the, um, if I watch Critical Role, I stop watching it because I'm like, I just want to go play D and D or talk about the D and D games I'm in with my friends, mm. rather than watch other people enjoy their game. You know? Yeah, it's, that seems to be a pretty common response. Like. Almost every video of of theirs, like the archive of streams, is just like people talking about their own D and D games. All of them. Yeah, like I'm I'm DMing like two games. I'm playing in one other game because I think the other game I was going to be in was uh, the Pathfinder game was canceled. So it's like three D and D games. Or well, um. And it's very fun. I I think though I I will prefer DMing to playing most of the time. It's just very fun to control the flow of the story, be a writer, you know. Mm. Anyway, what are we talking about? We're just kind of rambling. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Story of this podcast for the past couple of years, honestly. <laughs> yes. That's selling a short, really. It's been longer than that. Hmm. <laughs> so, um, other thing that I did uh, yeah. a few days ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, I forget what sparked it. It was some conversation on some other server, and it was just like uh, talking about Fallout Four. Okay. I think uh, someone else was having a conversation and uh, about how not great it was, and I dropped in with comments like, "Yeah, um, it's just like." A Bethesda game, so that means modders have actually made it a great game, after the fact. Especially the one that completely invalidates the entire plot of Fallout Four. Uh, like, Wait, oh, there's a there's a mod that does that. Uh, start me up. It's called, which uh, changes it so 
you can just not do the pre-war shit and not be the canon protagonist. <clears throat> so you're not Sean's dad or mum. Uh, you don't necessarily have to be from Vault 111? 111. Um, <clears throat> so you can go the canon route and just skip the pre-war bit and just come out of the vault. Or you can be someone else that also went into the Vault 111, just didn't happen to be one of the that couple. Um, or you can just be someone who's from the fucking Commonwealth, who cares? That's so much better. <clears throat> and they edited a bunch of dialogue, so it's just like, yeah. You're, you're, you're just a person that has no attachment to any of these characters. Um, Codsworth is treated as just kind of not really getting that you're not the person he's expecting to come home but he's just kind of lost it a little bit and he's like you might not be the person I'm waiting for but I don't fucking care anymore please come and talk to me <laughs> it's been 200 yeah. years guy I need some company this sounds so much better yeah, yeah so uh so you're I've, having this conversation about about these mods and such. Yeah, and I was like, yeah, that uh, that was the mod that I was talking about when I said it invalidated Fallout 4. And they were like, yeah, oh, I didn't know that existed. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it, it is pretty, pretty, pretty cool. Dumb. I, I, I wonder what other mods have have, have come out for Fallout Four in, in 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 this time of a lot of people having a lot of free time on their hands. I, I, want, I wonder oh. if um. Oh, you went down a rabbit hole. Oh yeah. Okay, lay it on <sighs> me. What do you got? What do you got? I'm sitting here. <clears throat> to be perfectly honest, I didn't actually get a lot of new stuff. Um. Yeah, a a lot of the newer stuff, like, oh god, the things I could have looked at, like the fucking frontier and that shit, I definitely skipped over that, and that alone might have soured me on some other projects that seemed like they might have been cool. Like there were a bunch of campaign and faction mods for like the Brotherhood outcasts and like some, uh more sinister factions that I can't really remember what the details were of. Um, and I just, I just looked at them and I was like, I remember the frontier. I don't want to get near this shit. <laughs> just, no, just skipped over the in entirely. And, um, <clears throat> but yeah, I, uh, I, 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 I have been playing Fallout 4 for a while for the past few days. Uh, yeah, that sounds fun. Yeah. Most I, frustrating yeah. bit of the yeah. whole experience was like there's this mod that I got in the past, like ages ago. It's uh, I think it's Armor Smith, <clears throat> mm -hmm. which retools how the armor crafting works. And I saw there's another one. It's called Weapon Smith. Okay, that's actually way more interesting than the armor one. I I really want that one. So I'm gonna. You know, it can't be that compli complicated. Like, the Armorsmith one's pretty easy. You just get the resource set, and then that mod, and the script extender, and then go. Done. Easy. Done that a thousand times. So we'll look at it. Uh, okay, you need these uh, basic resource packs. Okay, cool. That's the stuff that I've already got for Armorsmith. It's cool. Uh, script extender. Done. Easy. Need that for fucking everything. Um, okay, you've got those? Cool. Now you need to get these ten different weapon mods, by which I mean mods that add a spe specific oh. single weapon. Uh, that oh, it's is, that type of mod. That is just a real-world fucking gun that some 
gun nut decided to just throw into the game because they really like that gun because this fucking American game. That's just how they roll. Um, so there were just like 10 of those. Um, the weaponsmith did actually have... It could have been much worse because they did have a file on there that was literally every other weapon mod resource that the mod needed. And there was like 50 in there. And I guess these 10 that weren't part of that were just the ones that they couldn't get permission for. Like, the guy that made it just decided to be an asshole and said, Hey, no, you're not allowed. They have to download my mod directly from my page. Um, I don't know that for sure, so I'm going to say allegedly. Like, I, I don't fucking know. But in fairness, these people haven't been on the Nexus in a while, so it's like, who cares? But... Yeah, so you have to download these 10 extra mods to get this one mod working so that you can do weapon crafting. When I'm probably not going to be using any of these extra fucking guns, I'm just going to use the one that's already in the game. This isn't what I'm getting the mod for, I don't care. But, alright, fine, let's fucking do it. And I go down the list, and I get mod after mod after mod, and how the fuck does this install? There are no install instructions. Uh, it just says, hey, this is what this does. It adds this cool fucking gun that I really love that no one else gives a shit about. Um, and there's like three different installers and it doesn't tell you which one you need. And Weaponsmith also doesn't tell you which one you need. So it's all guesswork. And then, okay, I'll, that one, sure. I'll take that one. Just hope it fucking works. It's probably not going to work with... And I go down the list and I'm like, this thing is just going to crash like a fucking meteor. So I'm just going to fuck it. I don't care anymore. And I deleted the whole thing. Like, oh my god. Mm. All just to make weapon crafting more interesting. Um. Except not because all it was was just an excuse to add all those fucking guns. Oh. Mm. Mm. I have encountered similar mods like that uh, back when I was into modding Skyrim, mm. where it's just like, oh, cool, you want to have this cool feature to the game? First, you download these 15 other mods right here to ensure that this mod works, and it's just like, excuse me? It it It's really limiting when there's... Um, requirements like that yeah like on the one hand it's awesome that people can build on other people's creations that's really cool but it gets to the point of like there are so many fallout and skyrim mods at this point it is kind of absurd there are tens of thousands of them and a lot of it is, like, dependent on other stuff already existing in the mods that you've downloaded. Like, you, everything has gotten so interdependent because just the community is so big and everyone has all of these cool ideas that everyone else wants to incorporate that it gets too cumbersome for anyone to actually navigate. That kind of mm. sucks. Let's, let's be real. Like, it's one of the few parts of the whole modding experience that made the bullshit creation club that Bethesda tried to roll out a little more attractive. Yeah, there, there's something to be said with um, certain communities where the more those communities kind of build on each other's things, the higher the barrier to entry becomes. Mm. It, it's almost like layers of, of different in-jokes, in a sense. Mm. <sighs> so that was a mildly frustrating experience, but I got it working. It's fine. And the... Uh, oh, one that I did get that was fairly new was uh, Sim Settlements 2. Um, when I last played Fallout 4, it was Sim Settlements 1. It was a little unstable. 
but uh, the way this one works is a lot more um, a lot more focused. It has an idea of how it wants things to work <clears throat> and how it fits fits together. And they went into a surprising amount of effort in um, actually creating a proper tutorial for it, which was, if memory so serves, it was sorely lacking in the first version. Um, where they have this whole quest line <clears throat> of a guy that's trying to scavenge resources that are basically computers that tell you how to build a certain type of like uh, infrastructure. So he runs through this like play acting sequence of him being like a random settler, and you put down the ASAM, it's called. And it just puts down a, a block of land. And he's just like, oh, I'm just a random settler. I don't know how to do anything. But hey, look at all these instructions that this ASAM is telling me to do. Okay, I can do that. I can build this thing. And he builds a complete fucking house that is just there now. That just builds you a house for you. You don't have to faff about the wall mechanics and how they interconnect. And you don't have to put a roof on it. And you don't have to do like the little fucking bits and pieces to make it look nice it just is a house with a bed some nice little details on it to make it look like an actual place someone lives and there you have a house and you can do the same with farmland you can do the same with uh, infrastructure and shops and defense platforms and it just fucking does it for you it's great <laughs> like, that sounds so nice Oh, because <clears throat> I, I remember trying like way back in 2015 when this game ca first came out because I was interested in that shit. I was interested in the settlement system. That seemed kind of cool. Like it seemed like it would be a little cumbersome and finicky because it's still Bethesda, but it looked like something I wanted to try out. And I tried it out and it was miserable. Completely oh, no. was... bypassing the fact that all of the structures looked like trash because they literally were like rebuilding the fucking wasteland into like something worthwhile does not really work if everything still looks like trash and there is still piles of garbage lining the streets. Well, it, the issue is they didn't <clears throat> make any new assets that could be used as like, say, yeah, maybe your initial settlement looks like garbage. But what if you're <clears throat> able to, you know, upgrade that later on to be more refined until you're actually kind of building what would look like you know a real town but they're so fixated on that aesthetic of it looking like trash or not even having the assets um or time to make better uh building blocks that you're working with yeah like that literally the ugh. stuff that they have you build as like wood and metal housing Not only does it look awful, it would probably actually be more feasible and worthwhile to make a friggin' mud hut. Yeah. Because those metal structures, they have big fucking holes in them. <laughs> like, as shelter, it is awful. <laughs> it's You're not building, um... You're not building a house, you're building a destroyed apocalypse house. That's the problem. You said I could build the house, though. Well, in fairness, you can. If you have, like, 800 concrete resources, you can build big concrete walls that are completely bare. That is all it gets you as far as actually building a structure that looks kind of decent. Which makes sense because it's just a big flat surface with a texture on it. At that point, I'd rather just be able to, I don't know, <clears throat> say to the settlement, hey, can you ga go and gather resources and start to build your defenses and have them just do a passive building of that over time? Maybe that, there's like a, like a that planning is mode. That's also where I just part of Sim Settlements too. Oh. Yeah, it, it starts with you uh, putting down the ASAMs and just plotting out where people will build houses and farms and uh, junk scavenging sites and storerooms and everything. <clears throat> 
and then the thrust of the tutorial quests are to build what is called I think it's called the city hub which mm -hmm. is just hey this specific settlement is going to be for this very specific thing so you're going to build structures with this specific idea in mind and they'll just fucking do it that sounds great it's, i don't really know how that, that works but i'm looking forward to finding out that's nice that's that's just a, a feature that should have been in the game from launch i i feel like the issue with f the la last couple experiences i've had with fallout whether it would be like fallout 4 the entire existence of 76 is but the uh, bethesda would add in a whole new different side mode or something that they tout as the the big new thing or they like here's the new thing with uh multiplayer uh fallout game <clears throat> don't really understand how that works and it's multiplayer though it should be fun right or like with the, the whole building is hard so here's the break it early test application isn't that funny guys huh that was literally the e3 presser yeah, yeah. and and then there's the <laughs> hey here's the uh here's all this rebuilding of the world and it's the pre-war <clears throat> setting and you you didn't really think it through you just unlocked some dev tools for us not it's even a, dev tools like not even yeah limit, like, dev said, dev tools would have let you put objects that fucking cross between each other like you could form a structure from them instead of just trying to awkwardly snap pieces together at <clears throat> at direct right angles and only at direct right angles you motherfuckers let's not get into any of these I... acute angle shit that's not how we do things in bethesda town i feel like that's there because <clears throat> when they tried to do something else the game would just break in a million different ways mm. <clears throat> you know, I, I I feel like their own bugged out and glitched out game limited them so hard mm. that right, they're like rather than make this work, we don't have time, so we're just gonna push it out with you not just being able to do this thing or that thing. Mm. Uh... I hate Fallout Four. I hate it so much. I hate that on both of my save files, I lost it and it became unplayable. Both of my save files, for different reasons and different glitches and bugs, became unplayable. Mm. They didn't have, like, rotating saves? It was, like, three rotating autosaves. Uh... <clears throat> I think, um... I think the glitch actually stayed across i don't know I, don't, I think what happened was in my effort to try to fix it or do it myself i ended up having those autosaves filled while still being glitched hmm. something like on that console happened or pc it was, it was on console it was on it wasn't on pc if yeah. it was on pc i probably could have fixed it but because yeah, it was on console commands would have done it yeah yeah <clears throat> like i had um i think <clears throat> The glitch on one of my save files was um, just a permanent absence of sound. Hmm. That's an odd one. Um, and then the other one, I think, was just it, the game progression was completely just broken in some way. Hmm. Yeah. That one, at least, you would have been able to break with, uh, uh, fix with console commands. <clears throat> Like, there's just an NPC that just didn't exist for some reason, or a quest trigger that wouldn't proc, or something like that. You can fix all that with console commands. <coughs> it, it's it's why, like, in my head, when you were first talking about Fallout 4, my brain didn't think about 
Fallout 4, I thought about New Vegas. Ah, uh, New Vegas. Like, <clears throat> that's that's how thoroughly blocked the existence of Fallout 4 is. It was like, oh yeah, no, wait, there was a settlement building thing in there. Mm. I... I don't think I could go back to New Vegas anymore. I think I've gotten everything that I was ever going to get out of it. <clears throat> that makes sense. Which is not a knock against the game in any way, shape, or form. It is just fantastic, but it is not intended to be an infinite experience like 4 and 3 were. In fairness, I wouldn't want to go back to 3 either, but... <clears throat> In this case, the limitations of the engine and all that stuff, uh, just it's not an experience I need to go back to, no matter how much I liked it. So I would find the cumbersome nature of playing it less... It, it wouldn't be enough to bring me back to the table, so to speak. <clears throat> mm-hmm. there's just no reason to love it, love it to bits but I don't really want to play it again <clears throat> yeah it, it's <sighs> even saying that it doesn't feel like a point in Fallout 4's favor that I'm going back to it because I'm literally only going back to it because people fixed the things that are terrible about it Exactly. You going back to it because there's a lot of untapped mods and other potential that is, you know, there for you to mess with and play around with. Yeah. Like, if I had to go back and hear the protagonist whine trying to find his son who is named Sean, and I'm so glad that the Fallout community picked up on that and just had him... There is a mod where he just constantly shouts Sean... Oh, but with the Lucas Mars clip, what was it? Was that's it Lucas great. I think, no, that was the John. Yeah, John. Yeah, heavy rain. That one. That's the game. The, yeah, the heavy rain. Uh, <sighs> freaking Sean is missing. It's... Yeah, I was getting confused. Wish. It's Lucas Kane that was Indico Prophecy or Fahrenheit whichever you want to call it. Uh, and it was Ethan Mars for Heavy Rain. Yeah. <clears throat> I, I, I love the idea of having like a before the whole bombs dropped see- segment mm. and then a post segment where you can see things happen. The issue is I, I, I didn't have choices, right? Like if I could have influenced some things or changed some things, it could have had far reaching... Oh. That consequences. would have been so cool. Like, like I'm, I'm there, just there thinking were some of like... things that would have been really neat to look at. Like, there's that one house that is just the guy who's a drug dealer for all these yuppie people that live in this little neighborhood. <clears throat> and if you could interact with him and like influence him in some way before the bombs drop, that would be really cool to come back to the town in 2287. I think it is. Uh, and just see like his computer logs of like how that played out. In yeah, the days like, that followed. like if it gave you a couple of days to interact with people in twenty seventy seven. Even if I were to have control, like <clears throat> do, it, like I don't need a ton of control. But I, even if it was just like, do I have a son or do I have a daughter? You know. Hmm. Um. And also, like, what is the relationship between, I guess, husband and wife here? Um, Can I stop somebody from getting into the vault? Can I help somebody get in? Um, What relationships do I have that could impact things? Or even, like, a a Dragon Age origin style, different types of characters that I I could start out as. And, and give me some sort of template to work with. I don't know. It's just something that gave me more control over that section of the game would have been so nice and would have made it so much more meaningful than just a a long cutscene where you walk. 
You know what would have been odd and kind of neat? <clears throat> what? You know that vault tech salesman that mm-hmm. comes to the door and he's trying to get into the vault when the bombs drop and he's like, let me in, I'm from vault tech and they're like, no, and he's like, you'll regret this and runs off. Uh, mm-hmm. And you meet him in Good Neighbor later and he's a ghoul. Yeah. Um, it would be kind of neat if you could actually get him into the vault, but it kills him. <clears throat> yeah? <laughs> like, it's just a, such a small thing, but in fantasy it was just such a small thing anyway. But, <clears throat> just like, I yeah. Either, just either little, that little or things, like... Little things that made it feel interactive instead of just a really, 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 really... Either you know, that really or like cutscene. maybe... Maybe he breaks out of the he gets out of the vault early and then he's out wandering and he's also confused and he can become a companion, like an optional companion later on or something like that. Mm. You know, there's lots of ways you can take that if you put in the effort to have that pre war time actually mean something. Mm. Rather than uh be like this is your Wife, this is your child. You live here. You're gonna do this. Yeah. Don't talk to anybody. It's it's an odd thing because they did that whole sequence not for any plot worthwhile reasons, really. <clears throat> like I don't. I don't think the Sean thing actually plays out in any real meaningful way in terms of like drama or pathos. The whole thing was just kind of there to make you a fish out of water. So someone, I. It's always annoying when you try and think of like author intent because it's not really useful in actually dissecting the story, but. <clears throat> um. Like it, it feels like it's just there to introduce new players to the universe. Like, I've never played a Fallout game before. Okay, cool. This will show you exactly what Fallout is about. Because it starts you in the retro futurism of 2077, and then the bombs drop, and boom, you are now in the apocalyptic retro futurism of 2287. Where everything's fucked and everyone listens to doo wop. Still. What if you weren't able to get into the vault in time and became a ghoul? And Sean just dies. Like. There's. The, you know, no, the no, no, hard about it. thing. Just, yeah. Just materially speaking, if Sean just fucking died in the prologue, nothing about the plot would change. No. Literally, other characters could take the position that uh, Sean did. Well, Sean didn't uh, really have control of the institute anyway. Yeah. Like literally, all of the other like scientists and shit were doing stuff behind his back, so nothing would change. <laughs> It, it's so different because in Fallout 3, like, you have, you know, the, the childhood friend slash bully characters. You have uh, your character's, you know, father, right? Oh, my God. Yeah. Now that you mention it, like, oh, I hate so much about Fallout 3's plot. Like, just the absolute unrailsness of it. Like, that was a the thing they fixed in 4, granted. <clears throat> but just having but- that stuff matter to other stuff... Uh, that was way better in three. Like the prologue actually mattered. You interacted with people. Yeah, it yeah. came back later. There was it came like back say, later. There was a companion that came from that vault. Yes, <clears throat> and they they didn't do any of that stuff in Fallout Four. And you had uh, the the thing that works about having a father versus oh my my wife or my husband and child. 
is because in order for your character to have a significant other and a child, it's a lot easier for you to relate to, oh, a, a, that's my character's dad, all right, versus this is your love interest. Meet them for 30 seconds. Mm. Play around with their appearance in the in the mirror. Yeah. This is your child. Completely. Meet them for <laughs> that, 30 seconds. That was kind of... Versus like, you're growing up and you're seeing your father um, consistently <laughs> as you pull, grow up. Pull one out for the people that realized, oh, hey, cool, I can design my character. That's awesome. Oh, I can design my spouse too? That's kind of awesome. All right, I can design my perfect wife who let me spend three hours in this character creator designing my perfect spouse. Awesome. I can spend the entire game with them. <laughs> And then she dies. Yep. First five minutes. <laughs> Immediately. Like, it, it's such a poor implementation of something that they already did in Fallout 3. Mm. Because I, I felt like, I, I actually really do like, despite how on rails it is, I do like the prologue of Fallout 3 because... When I say on rails, I don't mean the prologue. I mean everything that comes after it in the main story. Yeah. Like, all of that shit is on rails. The only thing that is not on rails is that you can skip bits of it. That's literally it. But the prologue actually did have choice and consequence. Exactly. And it felt like it came back and it felt like it mattered and then eventually when you decide to go back to that vault um, you can see the full extent of everything that happened and you can make more choices you can read logs um of the people who were there and gain a full understanding of the situation hmm. and how um, your actions impacted things after you left right exactly but our actions didn't mean anything in the in the prologue of four because we didn't have any actions yeah and and that's literally fallout 4 is I, I never felt like i had you know a lot of freedom over the main story i guess well that's the awkward bit you kind of did like it it tried so hard to be new vegas it tried so hard uh new vegas but... succeeded on that shit because of the nuance not just because fucking Different factions alone doesn't make it a compelling idea. And there needs oh, to be an, a, an there needs to be like either an emotional or an intellectual reason to want to care about these different factions. And if you hinge one of them on, but it's your <clears throat> son that you met for thirty seconds in the beginning of the game that your main character really does care about. Just gonna tell you again, they care about them. You get this that? You understand they care is about them. Super science evil. Isol <clears throat> Isolationist science evil. They're evil for no adequate reason. But you can side with them. This faction is technology hoarding science evil. Kind of military doctrine science evil. But you can join with them. <clears throat> this faction is the fucking super amazing Minutemen of the future who are all benevolent and only exist to protect the safety and well-being of the Commonwealth because they're all super cool dudes. You have to join them. You don't get a choice in that one. Fuck you. Uh... <laughs> yeah. And then these people don't really give a shit about anything except for robots but you can join them yeah th th those were the fact that was pretty much the, the whole concept behind each faction in its entirety I still think about the end of New Vegas hey can end that entire game with a conversation Yep. If 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 your speech was high enough, you could you could debate with some of the characters. And you could it was lose so the sass debate. 
you could lose that debate despite having a high enough speech to win it because you had to so actually satisfying. convince them with real ideas yeah it was so satisfying because i always like to play the the talker character the high speech character i, I liked to talk things out when at all possible and i always felt like i was rewarded in that game yeah because because they know what that means to win a diplomacy check. Whereas Bethesda's approach to it is, Hey, Colonel Autumn, you should stop being a dick. <laughs> He's like, oh, damn, well, you put it like that. Fuck. You got me. <laughs> he just fucking leaves. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, so... Yeah, they they tried, but they didn't have any really compelling ideas beyond fucking robot slavery is bad. We're going to be robot slavers and have them replace people for no reason. Like, I, I still don't think anyone actually knows what the Institute's whole real plan was. Because it didn't seem like they had one. <clears throat> yeah, I, hey. I don't know. Hmm? Okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to build completely sapient robots. Awesome, that worked. Cool. Um, Alright, so now we're going to build completely sapient clone robots with a microchip in them so we can control them and do ev make them do whatever we want. They're basically cool. slave people, but we're calling them not people for reasons. Remember when the fucking synths in Fallout 3 were literally just robots and not clones? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know why they changed that. I... Because they wanted to have the, the slavery... Yeah, but How... they, they they removed all of the... New, like, we could say some things about David Cage, but he understood, at least enough, that the fact that the robots were robots it, it gave the situation a little bit of nuance. Not a lot, but a little. Because at the end of the day, <clears throat> what are you going to... You're going to argue, like, well, but they're people, but, but we have evidence that they're not. Like, the literally not they are made of circuitry and uh, ceramics and this, all sorts of shit and is this blade all over again sorry is yeah, this blade david cage's explanation of what detroit become human was was that it's blade runner except the humans are the evil ones <laughs> <laughs> i'm sorry that's different from blade no. runner no, oh, no, it isn't. No, but David D Cage is a hack, but... David thought it was. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but, like... They'll always think about how that <clears throat> game was saved by the actors just going off script. Yeah, like, Become Human, the... The entire plot was that the androids becoming sapient was because of a glitch. <clears throat> Like, there was just a fault in the program. It was actually planned obsolescence, apparently, which is a fucking weird thing, but still. <clears throat> they became sapient, but they weren't supposed to, and it wasn't entirely clear how real the sapience was, or whether it was just them glitching out in a way that made it look like sapience, and there were, there were arguments to be had there. Not that David Cage was interested in having them, but you know, arguments could theoretically have been made for that position <clears throat> and had, you know, the entire thing actually have a little bit of a nuanced point of view for the characters that were like, hey, no, th these are fucking toasters. Don't treat them like people. But when it comes to Fallout 4, they started with robots, but then they just started straight up cloning people. With human flesh and human organs and human brains. Yeah. 
it's and then they treated them like slaves and that's well okay that 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 that's just straight up slavery that's you've completely removed every single iota of nuance <laughs> to that what why system. why can't they just be robots <clears throat> Like the the thing about making a good series of factions is you shouldn't be able to look at one faction and objectively say everything that this faction does is bad, this faction is bad. There like there should be some element of at least <clears throat> doubt in there, right? Of like, well, yeah, but they're robots, though, and they don't actually have <clears throat> sentience. They're just acting according to programmed features or something. Yeah, like right. And you go back to New Vegas, and every faction there has its positives and negatives. All of them. Exactly. <clears throat> like the NCR were. Uh, they were democratic cool uh, they seemed to be faring very well, they were building up they were they were, they had actually created cities that didn't have trash lining the streets which is a plus and is apparently really fucking hard to do who knew <clears throat> and that was all great but also there was very clearly the rot of that sort of governmental system already setting in and it was very apparent by just about everyone in charge that you spoke to of that faction that yeah the problems of the past had reared their ugly heads in the future also um and then on the exact opposite side you've got Kaisar's legion Let's be respectful. Um, <laughs> who, yeah, they were, well, ironically, uh, the Romans probably would have called them barbarians, but um, they refused all technology because technology literally destroyed the world, which is a hard position to argue against in the circumstances. Um, <clears throat> uh, they practiced complete uh what's the term for it they very rigidly enforce gender roles to the point of women being basically slaves uh they did practice slavery of the people they conquered on the other hand and bear in mind that i'm very much playing devil's advocate here for the world that they were suddenly well not suddenly but the world that they were living in such a ruthless and dictatorial and very rigid societal system would not have the kind of rot that appeared in the NCR so while yes a lot of the things that they were doing were awful they were playing by a different idea of what they needed to be for the sake of surviving the world that they were in. Yeah, it, it's early civilization, <clears throat> you know, where it's a, a thing of necessity um, and it's a lot harder to get bogged down with... Um, Bureaucracy, yeah bureaucracy and all of the different modern issues that we have when there's a direct chain of command and everything is rigid everything is militarized everyone has a role no one gets to say no i want to have the right to do x y or z no if that is not your role you don't have the right to do shit you do what you're told and right it sucks for pretty much everyone except the people at the top but everyone survives Everyone survives, and they start to build up towards a position where that can eventually be changed. But at the same time, you know, do you really want to go backwards to go forward? Yeah. Like, the idea was both sides had positives and negatives. 
you could very, very easily argue Kaisar's Legion had way more negatives than positives. <clears throat> Especially if you happen to be playing a woman. But the fact was they had points that they were able to make for why they were doing things the way they were doing them. And that was just not something you got from any of the factions in Fallout 4, except for the Minutemen not wanting people to die pointlessly to raiders and gunners, which, by the way, is a faction that pretty much didn't get any kind of identity of their own, aside from they like guns. <clears throat> And like to shoot people with the guns. That's pretty cool. Um, and then you had the railroad that were like, yeah, slavery's bad. And those were the two identifying well, features of well, those factions. <clears throat> of course, they're called the railroad. Yeah. And then you had the Institute, who were evil for the sake of evil, for no real goal, whether scientific or otherwise, they didn't have a plan. They just did things. Yeah. And then the Brotherhood, who just kind of have this weird relationship with technology that they don't really expand upon very well. Like, they, they want to hoard all technology, but also really hate synths that are made of, like, old synths that are made of technology. And they want to destroy the Institute rather than take it over. It... I... Yeah. Like, what's... <clears throat> the thing you always have to ask is, like, what's the core conflict of the game? Why are, why are we here? What is the story? And The Institute of Fucks. It, that's that's the that's core it. conflict of the story. The Institute of and, Fucks, and they're like, doing things and they suck and we want to stop them. Why are they doing them? Who the fuck cares? That's not the important part. That's not... Shoot the guns, jackass. Yeah. Like, if the core conflict is a conflict between these <clears throat> factions over control of this area, like in, you know, New Vegas... <clears throat> Which it was. Um, then you have the option to explore each of those factions, what their rule would look like and weigh the co pros and cons of that before you choose which side to take, whether that side be <clears throat> any of those factions or to just do it yourself. Mm. Right? Yeah. If the, if your concept is, well, the Institute sucks, got to take care of the Institute, well, okay. How much choice does that leave me? I mean, I, I could side with them, but I really don't <clears throat> have much reason to other than they're trying to emotionally manipulate me which I don't even have an emotional connection with that character to begin with what it seemed like <clears throat> again author authorial intent and that's kind of a shitty thing to do rather than looking at it from an in setting perspective but this is where we are <clears throat> because they didn't give anything to latch onto in universe um, <clears throat> it seemed like People complained in Fallout 3 that you couldn't side with the Enclave. Okay, fuck it. We'll just throw in a really evil faction, and you can side with them if you want, you fucking moron. Well, well okay. I, I wanted to side with... They, they might have had actual reasonable argument. No, he just wanted to side with the evil guys. Here you go. Here's evil guys you can side with. Okay, thanks. <clears throat> Um, well, I think we've ranted about Fallout for quite some time. How long have we been ranting about Fallout? That's a very good question. Oh boy. How you doing, patient? Still with us? Oh. <laughs> Sorry, what was that? Oh, how, you, how you doing? Are you still with us? Yes, I'm still with you. <laughs> that's that's a lot better than what I thought you said. Mm. 
I, I don't know what you thought I said, but it's fine. Whatever. I thought you said, <clears throat> are you sick of this? That's also a valid question, in fairness. <laughs> <clears throat> I'm on rage, basically. Um, not much noteworthy has been going on. With the turn of the new year, my boss has finally retired. And now I'm back to working as one of only two tellers at this branch with two sales representatives, one of which is training to be the new manager. He's, I like him, but a lot of people seem to see him as arrogant. So we'll see how that goes. In, in in I don't know the situation, I don't know the people, but in absolute fairness, everyone thinks every manager is arrogant. Mm. <clears throat> or every presumptive manager is arrogant. Fair. Fair enough. Like the guy that is getting the promotion, everyone hates that guy. <laughs> That's just how that works. Well, I mean, this was to an extent that the day he walked in and said that he's going to be the new manager at the branch, one of the tellers never came back from her lunch break because she refused to work under him. That's strong. Well, what can you say? Like I say, I don't, I don't know the people, so... Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> But yeah, with there, there's really not too much going on. I've been playing Brilliant. Uh, no, I've been playing Shining Pearl recently. Mm-hmm. I've gotten up to six badges now, and um, <clears throat> growing reminded of the fact that there aren't a lot of Pokemon in Generation Four that really that I really really like to be perfectly honest really yeah honestly most of the new designs don't really do it for me and most of the ones that do are continuations from previous generations I mean my favorite Pokemon in generation 4 is probably Frostlass. I love a lot of the Generation 4 Pokemon. A lot of them are my favorites. Mm. I'm going to have to look this up to find out what Generation 4 Pokemon are. Because <laughs> this is the generation that I did not play. Mm. I mean, I like, Tor- I like Torterra. I've always been fond of the Turtwig <clears throat> line. I've never tried playing with Chimchar or Piplup, to tell you the truth. Infernape and Empoleon, Empoleon are the best. Their lines are great. Yeah, um, cool. The fucking the bird is is good for this gen. The fucking Mohawk bird. You get Luxray. Yeah, Luxray I like. Staraptor is okay. Pachirisu. Bidoof. Everyone loves Bidoof. Come on. Yeah, Bidoof. Cherim, and then Cherim with the sunshine form. Oh, Cricketoon so, was from this gen. Okay. I, yeah, I, I disagree with you a lot, patient. I'm sorry, but I, Cricketoon wins me over every time. Cadot, the Garchomp line, the Lucario line, um, uh, uh, even like smaller ones like Luminion <clears throat> is just good. I get the You get the Obama joke of Obama Snow. <laughs> um, no, I... <laughs> I love Lucario. He, I he, Luca, Lucario's great. I can see that immediately. Cricketune is nice. I I'm not sure how much I like playing with Cricketune, but I do like the design. I like Vespiquen. Yeah, Vespiquen's great. Um, Fan service. Also, buddies, again, uh... yeah, I I like Baneri and Low Penny as well. They're nice. Um, Honchcrow. 
yeah, Haunch Crow. We get a lot of the cool evolutions like um, yeah, Weavile, again, Magnezone, Rhyperior, yeah. Yeah, once again, I don't have anything against most of those, uh, most of the new additions to previous lines. I love Frostlass. I love Leafeon and Glaceon. Magnezone is cool. Uh, iffy on Electivire and Magmortar, especially since Jinx didn't get one for whatever reason. Hmm. Mm. Well, for, for whatever reason, hmm. yeah, hmm. can't imagine. Uh, okay, right, right, it's the whole controversy thing. Yeah, that might have been a factor. Uh, I honestly thought that Krogan can Toxic Croak with Gen 5, but apparently... No, they're Gen 4. Hmm? Yeah. I, 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 I like their... They're, they're not ones I'm arguing for, just to be clear. Yeah, um, I, have, I have friends who are who are real big fans of uh, Krogan and Toxic Croak. Now let me. I I'm not the biggest fan of them, but if I, there might be one thing that would make me uh, take notice of them. Just I like I like Toxic Croak's shiny form a lot. Mm. What's Toxic Croak's shiny form? I think I find that out. Um, honestly, it's it's one of those weird things where. I had a lot of exposure to the Gen 4 Pokemon, uh, primarily because Gen 4 is around the time when a lot of side games for Pokemon were coming out. Um, like Mystery Dungeon has a mm. lot of Gen 4 stuff, right? Um, yeah. As well as Pokemon Ranger, those games. Um, in fact, Pokemon Ranger was how you originally could get yourself a Darkrai and a Manaphy. Was uh, transferring them over, so I have like very special memories with this group of Pokemon. Even if I, you know, have some that are, you know, not not great. <laughs> um, I I don't like Drapion, to be honest. Yeah, I've I've never been fond of Drapion myself. But then you got Hippowd on freaking Hippo Sand. Yeah, but I like the hippo. You you can't really dislike that nice hippo. And I okay. I dis I used to dislike Bronzong until he saved my life in the uh, freaking um against Cynthia um, yeah, cool. in, in the remakes. Cool. I don't know, just. A lot of the Pokemon that I seem to find myself using are Pokemon from previous generations. And maybe that has something to do with the fact that Sinnoh only introduced 107 new Pokemon, out of yeah. which 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 are legendaries, and 29 are continuations of lines from previous generations. Mm. Well, this is where we really started getting into the whole introduction of, like, mythical Pokemon, which are just kind of, like, pseudo-legendaries. Um, I mean, as of, as of late, it's been a lot easier to get a hold of mythical Pokemon in normal gameplay. I mean, they've made it so you can get three in recent generations. Yeah, and um, you know, cool thing about uh, Brilliant Diamond and uh, Shining Pearl is actually, once you beat the game, uh, yeah. you have access. Don't, to... don't tell me, uh, I don't want to be spoiled. It's not a. I I don't consider it necessarily a a spoiler, more of a convenience. Um, Go which ahead. Is, uh, Ramanus Park, as a as a post game that allows you to. Uh, encounter poke, uh, legendaries from previous generations. Uh, yeah, I saw that in the trailer. Yeah, so um, that's that's not a spoiler or anything, but that is like, if you want to go legendary hunting, you can. Hmm. Not particularly, to be honest. I already have like most of them, anyways. <laughs> So you were talking about uh, 
your experience. You got to the sixth gym. You. I've just, I've just been playing through it, and uh, I really would have preferred the platinum storyline. Yeah, it was superior. Enough. It was it was blatantly superior to Diamond and Pearl. Yeah, I, I prefer Platinum. Um, I I just like it that much more. Um, unfortunately, that's not what we got. That, no. That's kind of the shame of like, uh, I mean, with the Oris, um, <clears throat> you know, Mega Ruby Alpha Sapphire, we had that whole like entire extra Delta episode or whatever it was called. Are you was... telling me we don't get anything special for Giratina? We do get something, but not like a full story thing. Um, and that's kind of a shame. Um, Very much a shame. Giratina is easily the coolest of the three. Oh yeah, no, definitely. I agree. Hmm. Um, Giratina's been a longtime favorite of mine. Um, but... I have a love-hate relationship with it. <laughs> I'm guessing the hate side comes more from when you're not fighting uh, with Giratina. That is to say, when you're fighting against Giratina. Yeah. I have... So, it, it... Yeah. Uh, um, they do one thing that's kind of cool with Giratina, but um, I won't say what it is. Uh, in Burly Diamond Shining Pearl, it's just you don't get the full like experience that of Platinum, and that just makes me sad because I really like Platinum and, and the story that it was able to tell. Um, but, yes, absolutely. But that's kind of the downside of uh, doing a double remake like this, you know. If they make it a triple remake, everyone will be happy. Just include the extra stuff as like a DLC. You know? Oh, I don't need another game. I just just give me a little bit of DLC to work with. Mm. Agree to disagree. Anyway. Yeah, from from Gen 4, the only the only Pokemon that I really love other than legendaries that were introduced that weren't part of a previous generation's line are Torterra, Rotom. I mean, that that's a big popular one. I liked Rotom even before I could access its five other forms. Mm-hmm. <sighs> the the other form of forms of Rotom kind of ruined it for me, but you know, that's that's just me. Vespaquen and Luxray. That's about it. When I I got Brilliant Diamond for Christmas along with Shining Pearl, I'm probably going to use Peplup on that playthrough, so we'll see if Fempolian joins the uh, joins the list. I'll admit to being kind of fond of Wormadam as well. Yeah. But <sighs> And I like ghost types in general, so I sort of like Drifloon and Driftblem. Iconic. Yeah. Terrifying. Just but yeah, the big ones <laughs> The big ones that I like from Gen 4 are mostly continuations of previous generations. Frostlass, Leafeon, Glaceon, Gallade. And uh, especially mm. Roserade. Yeah, Roserade's great. Mm. I I don't like Tangrowth. Tangrowth is a weird one. I I've never liked it. I mean, but... Tangela was weird to begin with. I like well, Tangela. Yeah. Tangela hat. Why do you, why are you calling it Tangela? Tangela. Uh, no, he said Tangela. <laughs> I just copied him. Tangela. <laughs> Tangela had like. A, a very distinct look to it like the vines were very visible and it you know it had a distinctiveness to it that tangrowth just kind of doesn't you can't really see the the vines as well anymore so it just seems like a 
lumpy blob at this point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Tangela I... also has the freaking design aesthetic of a Kirby enemy, and I like it. Yeah, kind of. Okay, I see where you're coming from. I don't dislike Electivire or Magmortar. Not just not sure how I feel about it. Weavile is cool. Rhyperior is cool. Yan Mega. Yeah, Yan Mega definitely goes in the other direction from what Yanma was and goes from cute and probably harmless to very menacing dragonfly and it's Yeah, it's it's pretty cool. Yeah. Mama swine. Who, who, who likes dragonflies? Who would ever want like dragonfly powers? It's stupid. Uh, I don't know. It's some some freaking wiener just going around with his dragonfly wings. Oh yeah, gosh. no. I'm still fucking salty about that. I actually made a mythology joke about that in one of my stories. Just like, but yeah. like we get mama swine, hmm. Porygon Z, Gliscor, Dusk Noir. Um, I. Dust Noir is cool too. Any ghost type introduced in this generation, yeah, the ghost types are all. Yeah, no, they're all fantastic. Yeah, yeah. It's hard to go wrong with a ghost type, really, because it's it's I... where they're allowed to be creepy, and they seem to really. There's a lot of creative juice going on for the ghost types for the creepy factor. <clears throat> and then there's and then there's Pro Pass if you want a floating Mario head. <laughs> Yeah, Probo Pass is. Yeah, I definitely don't dislike it, even if it's not uh, something I think I, I love would... its shiny form because it literally just becomes the colors of Super Mario Brothers Mario sprite with the yellow and the red. I I don't but know I'm what not... they were thinking with the name. It's like, so I, bad. I... <laughs> Ugh. It it sounds unpleasant. Oh yeah, it does. I'm not fond of the fossils from the generation though. It's the only generation that has fossil Pokemon that I don't like. Gen uh, one goes without saying. I, Gen... I I'll agree with you on Bastiodon. I like Rampardos. Um especially Shiny Rampardos. I have a shiny Rampardos. It's really mm. cool. Yeah, I prefer blue to red, usually. I like the blue and I like the red. It's just a oh. nice shiny. Did anyone like Amistar over Kabutops? I mean, there's that whole meme about it, but in general, probably not. Kabutops. Oh, I've heard Kabutops. But Aerodactyl is better than both. Yeah. Cause it's just a dinosaur. Yeah, it's a it's a rock dinosaur. Well, my they're, my they're all rock dinosaurs, but still. Yeah, my favorite fossil <clears throat> right now is Tyrantrum. Mine is Cradley from Gen three. I mean, I Gen just... three is my favorite generation, and I've never been overly fond of Armaldo, but I've grown to be very fond of Cradley. Hmm, interesting. Were there fossils really think... in Gen 2? No, there were no fossils in nope. Gen 2. Yeah, I didn't think so. It's the only generation that didn't introduce any more fossils. Gen 5, I like Caracosta. Gen 6, uh, what were the fossils? Oh, yes. I I stand corrected. Uh <sighs> Cradley is not my favorite fossil Pokemon. By far, my favorite fossil Pokemon is Aurorus. Fair. Yeah. I just love the the gracefulness of it, and I love its cry. The joke's too easy. I'm just going to let it pass. Yeah. Uh... Yeah, no, Gen 6 was the Tyrantrum and Aurorus. Um, which Aurorus is nice, but I I, I like I like big T Rex. Big <laughs> T Rex make me happy in my in my lizard brain. <clears throat> and I you like the your dinosaur brain. That's right, my dinosaur brain. And I like the graceful uh, sauropods myself. 
Man, Gen Gen Eight had the really weird thing where you could <laughs> you you I, revive the wrong. I did not like that at all. It's I, so I did, weird. I kept raising the Dracovish that I got in hopes that it would evolve into something less less. What's the word I'm looking for here? Deformed. Less what? Deformed. Deformed. That works. Yeah. Yes, that works. <sighs> <sighs> but no, it was just... It was powerful. And still is. It's a powerhouse. And it has a... It has a cool cry. Just... Uh, I don't like their design for that generation. Any of them. They're just visibly mismatched. <clears throat> Man. Pokemon. Yeah, we can talk about that pretty much as long as you guys can... Uh, rant about uh, Fallout, apparently. Remember when there was Mega Aerodactyl? I still miss the Mega Evolutions in general. And he had a beard made of rocks. <laughs> Wouldn't it's that... Like... Wasn't it a goatee? It looks like a beard. Just a pointy one. A real Jafar-style beard. So a goatee. No, not not ah uh, no 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 not quite a goatee, just pointy. He just we we were trying to dig Aerodactyl out of the rocks and we we uh we missed a few bits. <laughs> you remember when Charizard got a mega form, got two, and yeah. only one of them was allowed to be a dragon. And it was the shittier one. Yeah. Remember when Mewtwo had two Mega Evolutions? And one of them turned him into Frieza? Yeah. I miss Mega Evolution. Me too. Mm. But, you know, I don't Sorry. expect they'll bring it back ever. Just make it a real uh, evolution, you cowards. Yeah. Honestly, do it. Do it, cowards. Well, that's, um, there's not much else for me to say about what's been going on with me. Pretty much same old, same old. I've got a few more fic recommendations, but that's about it. You know. Oh, <clears throat> uh, I I played more Rogue Legacy too, and it's okay. I still Yay. don't like the progression, and even worse uh, about the progression. Um, you know how you can find like uh, equipment and runes and shit, and that was a thing in Rogue Legacy One. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can get six sets of equipment out of like 14 I think uh, and the rest are locked behind New Game Plus yep uh. personally find that kind of shitty like hey New Game Plus is New Game Plus it's for if you want to play more of the video game that you like because you find it fun <clears throat> uh, let people unlock all the content in the first run just let them do it don't be a shit does that include bonus bosses? yes that was a thing that they changed in Royal wasn't it? Persona 5 um, in, the, in the original version you could not fight the bonus boss until the second run, but in Royal you could. Now, that you could not fight the bonus boss in the first run in Royal either. Well, 
you could fight one of the bonus bosses in Royal on the first run. <laughs> one out of uh, three. They just didn't make it a trophy that you had to play the game twice to beat. You could platinum the game on your first run. In that case, my position stands for Persona as well. Just let people do things in the first run. Don't be dicks. No one's to do no one wants to do three hours of tutorial where it's just fucking cutscenes just to do the one thing that they're actually doing New Game Plus to do. Honestly, I think the best solution is once you beat the game, then you just you know, unlock those final bosses, extra bonus bosses or content, and you just load back into that save, and you're like, oh, hey, you can go over here, you can go fight that boss. It's just, it's a better way to do that than being like, well, you can only do it on New Game Plus. Just, no, no, if you want to have it unlock later, then un- have it unlock later. I will say for Strikers, they did it. They They did it in a different way. You beat the main storyline, and that unlocks a bunch of bonus bosses. You beat all the bonus bosses to unlock New Game Plus, which the only thing that they really add in New Game Plus is merciless difficulty. So it's basically if you really want the challenge of conquering everything. There's only one thing that you can really get in New Game Plus that you can't get in the base game, and that's the invincibility-granting omnipotent orb accessory, which you only get when you finish beating all of the bonus bosses on I learned difficulty. Something I learned recently um, about uh, SMT5 is in order to get the true ending, you have to do it on New Game Plus. Yeah. <sighs> And um, depending on which ending you get on your, um, which ending you get, you'll unlock something different or special for New Game Plus. Like one ending will allow you, will remove the level limit on fusions. Um, One ending will get you a really powerful, uh, specific um, demon to add to your compendium that you can fuse. You know, so on and so forth. And I'm like, I don't know if I'm going to play the game that many times to unlock everything. Uh. Uh. Gandom Flux is depressing today. New Game Plus is for playing more of the video game that you like. Don't don't lock stuff in New Game Plus. That's not how you do. Like, New Game Plus, give them new stuff that is literally just numbers going up. Unlock big head mode, you cowards. Sure. Goofy shit. That that would be cool. That would be a thing I would like to see. <clears throat> I like, want more of that new, old freaking yeah. cheat menu stuff. New Game Plus, you go through uh, the story, same as normal, but every palace you unlock a new stupid thing. So, yeah. like, first palace you get big head mode. Cool. That's just in the game mm-hmm. for the rest of the game. Everyone has fucking bubble heads. Second mm-hmm. palace... Everyone is inexplicably on fucking razor scooters. I don't fucking know. Like, just what? dumb bullshit that just gets added on top of everything else until the game is barely recognizable by the end of it. Give me access to the cheat menu where I can just flip on all the weird... Like, that's the one thing I like about Ratchet and Clank was the reward for going out and finding um all the gold like um screws and stuff is you just unlock additional cheat menu items like big yeah. head mode you it just can change the, the weapon that you use for your wrench like give me that goofy crap okay yeah. i'll play like, the game like three times if you have that stuff in there 
maybe by the end of it, uh, for the last dungeon, uh, you unlock a, you know, because it's so fucking determined to be on its own system, because fuck you, uh, Morgana is put in a Spider-Man costume for the rest of the game. And all of his lines are just replaced with, I'm Spider-Man. And that's just <laughs> that's just what he says for every line for the rest of the game. I think that's something that you would have to make optional. Please and thank you if they... If it's they New want Game to Plus. If you, if you want to play the game again, just play the game again from the beginning. But for New Game Plus, let's get wild. <laughs> That's not. I mean, not like that. Rather than lock content or special endings or such, <coughs> um, try to make it so that we want to keep playing it for other reasons rather than we feel like we have to. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Because if you feel like you have to beat the game twice, you can get sick of the game. Yeah, Um, I love the game. Or if you want to go in a different direction, go the portal direction. You finish the game once, cool. You unlock director commentary. Yeah, that's always a good one too. That that would be a good one. That would be good. Or voice actor commentary. Or voice actor commentary. Yeah, director commentary would be kind of difficult for, you know, a very Japanese game made by very Japanese people who don't speak English. So, in this case, for us, it would probably be voice actor commentary, uh, maybe voice director commentary, um, uh, localization team. Localization team commentary would be fascinating. Yes, agreed. Like I, I, I would love to hear the explanation for why they decided to call the Yakuza the Mafia in <laughs> Persona Five. Like that was, hmm, that was a choice. I mean, they called it Yakuza at two other separate points in the game. Yeah, but uh, hmm, that's um. I feel like neither the Yakuza or the Mafia would be very happy with that choice of localizing that way. Uh, I don't know what to say. I do know what to say, actually. I'm running out of time. Yeah, uh, this has so... been going for a while. We right. ranted about Fallout for an hour, and then we ranted about Pokemon for an hour, and then we ranted about New Game Plus and kind of persona and tangential for about thank you know. to all of our patrons who were able to donate <sighs> to us um thank you to ryuhitsia 21 for i believe he has uh, two different donations set up but yeah, they total to uh 1420 because <laughs> it's a 10 dollar donation one to 421 thank you to still of house thunderbird for your one dollar donation thank you to veil vale for your 10 dollar donation no, no, no. Sailor House Thunderbird actually upped it to $5. It's just that I'm looking at the wrong tier. Um, thank you to Vale for your $10 donation. Thank you to Boy by Fresh for your $20 donation. Thank you to Greek Guy for that $1 donation. Thank you to Ethan F. for that $10 donation. Thank you to Barn BCM for that $1 donation. Thank you to The Cross Brain for that $10 donation. And thank you to Troper, Tempest Troper, for that... $10 donation. You guys are just lovely. Thank you so much. Pleasure is mine. I um, know most of those people. Most of them aren't lovely, but all right. <laughs> they are lovely because they're, they're, they're helping us out. Isn't Bifresh still literally a slime? Yeah, he's fresh. Demon sl- well, I suppose he is fresh, so that's... That's a point in his favor. It's yes. a point in his loveliness. <clears throat> what yeah. Talking? Yeah, that's... Get the, the, well, I was ending the podcast because yeah. nobody else would. Yeah. All right. Thank you for listening to the Phantom Flux podcast. I don't know what number we're on, 
but I presume it's pretty up there at this point. Okay, third palace. You finish the third palace, the entire cool battle soundtrack is replaced with the Space Jam soundtrack. Now, I have a better idea. You finish the third palace, and Morgana becomes a rabbit. Anyway, thank you for listening. Uh, Tune in next week. Um, If there is one next week, I don't know. The future's uncertain, and we're all going to die. Bye. I'm Spider-Man.